thing is stuck. y'all thanks for tuning back into Chicanic. up everybody's having a great week do not go anywhere because we are jumping right into this repair today my neighbor called and said that his mower broke and was making a terrible sound from the deck so what do you do when your neighbor calls and says your mower's broken you own a lawnmower repair shop you fix it because i might need my dogs fed when i'm on vacation eventually but before we jump into today's video, if you're a fan of saving time, money, and frustration while fixing your own small engine equipment while watching in-depth tutorials, you've come to the right place because that's what I do. I upload a couple times a week, and if that sounds interesting, hit that like button, smash that subscribe, don't forget to hit the notification bell, and please leave a comment. I love to read through the comments, and I'll reply to all the early commenters. Oh my gosh, y'all gotta see this. Can you see them all? That pack of deer walking across the street way up there, isn't that cool? All right, let's get back to it. For this demonstration, we are using my neighbor's Husqvarna YTH24V54, which means that it is a 24 horsepower with a 54 inch cut. And we first are gonna have to take this deck out because as far as I can see, something happened that made the belt come off. And when I look down here, this spindle in the center, that's uh, broken. So we've got to get to that bad boy. We're going to unhook the deck hangers from the front and the back right here and get this party rolling. Now, when we got this mower from my neighbor, the belt was already off, but if your belt is not off, it'll still be on the bottom pulley on your PTO and it'll still have tension on it. So to remove it from the PTO uh, pulley, you're going to have to release the tension, which on this particular model has this really cool bar here. All you do is slide it out of its area there, release this tension on the idler and you're able to remove your belt. Now all three clips are going to be the same and they're not the funnest ones in the world to take out. They do have this little part right here that makes it to where you, they just don't slide out on their, by themselves. So you're going to have to bring it out and finagle it. Oh, me trying to hold a camera and do it at the same time. But anyways, that's how you do it. We're gonna pull that washer off and do it to the other side and just lift it up as we get it off this little nub right here on each side. And I don't forget, I forgot it's got this one on here. It's got this little sway bar one here. We're going to have to remove it too. Just like that. So I need both hands to do this so I can't film while I am. But I'm going to be picking the edge of the deck up to release the tension that's on this hanger right here. So I can just, it, it'll come right off once I release the tension. I'm going to do that on both sides. Now, last but not least, each side will have a deck hanger going up from a bar that connects to the back of the deck. We'll have to take the clips off those too. And hopefully after that, you still have a few knuckles left. Now this next part is important. Looking at the tractor from this side, that sway bar one that was back here, since it is pushed in here, we can't push it through to release it and go that way. So we need to bring the deck out to the right if you're sitting on the tractor. Pull it this way. All right. Okay, now that we got it off here, you can see this bad boy is just flopping around. I've checked all the other spindles and pulleys and they seem to be fine. So probably just hit a rock. These are made to break, I think. So we're gonna use our seven eighths to remove the nut holding the pulley on. So we got to get out something to get it loose here. Good 
goodness gracious. Get in there. Almost. I think we got it. There we go. Goodness gracious. Now, the reason that thing was stuck like Chuck on there is because it's got these splines that go on to the spline shaft. And when it hit, it slightly jostled it over to where it was stuck on each one of those splines. So that's sometimes how you got to get them off. And we're going to use a half inch socket to take the three bolts that are left holding the spindle on. That one just broke off and they will they'll just break off smooth in the spindle and that's why a lot of times people have to replace them even if everything else is fine the bolts break off in these like crazy there we go oh this thing was toast all four of them broke all right still attached to a piece of spindle so let's flip it on over oh uh, yeah we're gonna have to get that out check that out and he wanted his blade sharpened but that thing is uh gone new blades now, since there was a piece that was left of the spindle in one of the bolts, I still have to remove the, the bolt from the other side, but I have to have a way to keep it tight while I'm doing it. So I use my vice grips here to hold it while I get it off. Just like that. Now, depending on where you get your spindle from, I get them already pre-tapped with all the hardware because my customers like it best that way. They don't want to have to tap it, but you might get one that does not come pre-tapped and you'll have to do it yourself. So this is super simple. When they're tapped, you're going to put it underneath the deck. Bring it up through your hole. Set the deck back down. And you're going to line up your bolt holes and you're going to start all of them by hand until you've got them as much hand tight as possible. Hopefully you can see this here. These are locking bolts. See all them ribs around the top there? So these are made to lock tight and not back out. And we're going to go ahead and tighten these down just a bit. We're definitely going to have to change these blades out, so we're going to use our 5 8 to remove the other two blades. Oh, there's so much buildup on them. My socket doesn't want to fit. Get on there. And we're definitely going to have to change these blades out, so we're going to use our 5 8 to remove the other two blades. Oh, there's so much buildup on them. My socket doesn't want to fit. Get on there. And one more. putting the new pulley on always remember you have a spacer this is not a washer to go on the top of the pulley this is a spacer so the pulley is not riding on the top of the spindle and we're not even going to go into these fake zerks here i don't even know why they put them on them they just could break off and let dirt go down in there they don't do anything we all know that that they're sill bearings and uh, they're just for show but we're going to go ahead and put our new pulley on Get our nut here. 
We're gonna go ahead and tighten our nut down. You do wanna use a deep socket because you don't want to mess up the fake zerk. And since this one didn't wanna come off, we're going to have to uh, break out the big boy here. Oh yeah, much easier. Unfortunately, when that happens, that's probably because this spindle here where the blade sits on has mushroomed out and that is not good. So unfortunately we run into this a lot when the blade has slightly spun out on the spindle and it's ruined the shaft really. So the new blade is not going to fit on this. Let me show you. Got the new blade here and let me set it on here. It's just not going to go on this no matter what. This thing is completely mushroomed out and has to be replaced. Fortunately though, they have a bad spindle housing with a good spindle shaft. So we're on day two now. I just got done chiseling out a bunch of debris that had built up on the inside of this deck. And now we're gonna get the shaft out of this old spindle that's all broken. Now, when it has one of these fake zerks on top of it, you're going to want to remove it before we go to beating the shaft out because we don't wanna destroy it because we do wanna keep the dust out of there and reuse this one. To remove the shaft out of your pulley, all you gotta do is tap it with your hammer and it should slide right out or just hit it on something. Like that, slides right out. Scoot, scoot out of the deck. Kajit, out of the deck. Right, we gotta flip back over now and it has two bolts holding this top shroud on and it takes a T30 torque. I already started this one to see what it was. Someone needs to charge the battery. All right, we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and take our nut off and get our pulley off and bang this one through too. It doesn't matter if we remove the zerk or not because this shaft is junk. Well, that was gonna be a lot easier. So that pulley is still good, yes. So is it just me or is every time you need a hammer, all you can find is a mallet and every time you need a mallet, all you can find is the hammer. That's the way I roll. Okay, so I found this. And I know I'm gonna get a lot of comments about this, but hey, I'll leave a real hammer in my Amazon wish list right below this video. If you wanna check it out, we'll get my name engraved on it. It'll go in my toolbox and Ron won't run off with it. Let's knock this out. Just like that. It works. All right, so we're going to put it back together just like we took it apart here. Let's see if I can get this to go on up there. Just like so. Let me use my mallet and tap it up in there. in the hole. Okay. Now we still have our spacer on there, so we don't need to put another spacer on. We're going to put our pulley back on. Get our nut back on there. And tighten it back down. Just like that. I'm going to go ahead and put my belt back in place. And I can put my cover back on. And I almost forgot. Put the Zerk back in. 
Look, I got all my blades on, sitting on the stars all pretty, but I did want to point a couple things out. Blades, the swoop, the lift on them always go up because it throws the grass up over and over again and cuts. Now on the old spindles, it might have a flat surface on your star here. When you replace it sometimes on these, it'll have a little raised spot. So whenever you go to, uh, hopefully it comes with new hardware because your old washers and bolts do not have an area for that raised spot. So if you put that one on there, it's going to leave a gap and that's not good. That will make sure your blade's gonna be loose and it's gonna spin your star out on you. The new bolt and washer that it comes with has this little inset right here, so it'll fit and cup over it perfectly. So always something to watch for. So I'm gonna tighten these blades down. We're going to check clearance. Everything's spinning freely. And we are going to make sure that that does not hit. So that's good. Everything looks great. Okay, so I've got my belt back in place thanks to this handy dandy little diagram right here. You wanna make sure that it's in your spindles really well and in it'll be pressed against this belt guard right here so you'll be able to make sure it stays in place in through this uh, idler pulley. The idlers always are flat like this that to where it runs on the back of the belt. If it's a V pulley, that runs in the, the groove of the belt. So I've got everything lined up. You want to make sure that these bars are facing forward because once you have the deck underneath the mower, you cannot move them from back to forward. So put them forward. And once again, we're going in from the right side, pushing it in that way. So whenever we go in, that sway bar that's right there is going to come right into this hole right in this side. got all my clips put back on all of the hangers and the front hanger and uh, last we've got to put the belt back on now it's still stayed around all my pulleys pretty good so um, you do want to double check that and make sure it hasn't fallen off any of your pulleys but on this particular one like I said it's got this release right here which moves that idler in the center and then I'm going to be able to uh, put this belt back up around this PTO engine pulley, but I can't do it with one hand, so I'm gonna have to turn the camera off. And voila, it's on there. Everything's still good on its pulleys, and then we can bring this back and put tension again on that idler, which makes everything snug as a bug in a rug. And that is how you be a good neighbor. Thanks again for tuning in to Chicanic. Hopefully this video saved you time, money, and frustration in the future. If you haven't found us on Facebook yet, find us at facebook.com slash Chicanic. Find us at Instagram at The Real Chicanic or find us at Chicanic.com where you can get your own t-shirts, hoodies, and long sleeve shirts. Thanks and have a great day.